let me show you um, some of the problems that we um, arrive at if we don't read the Quran with a completely rational perspective and a rational understanding and making fully sense of the words. Now I'm going to show you an, an excerpt now from two anti-Quranists or two anti-Muslims, uh, David Wood and another, uh, you know, ex-Muslim, uh, I think his name is Apostate Prophet. And uh, they've, they've got a very extreme hatred of Islam and of the Quran and of Muslims. And I'm going to show you how a weak translation of the words of the Quran gives these people the ammunition whilst of course they are in any case they 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 will never be guided by the quran because the quran says you dillubi kasiran the quran is a source of misguidance for the evil and a source of guidance for the sincere seekers, seekers of truth so not that these guys will in any way ever receive guidance from the quran but i just wanted to show and if you're easily offended if you're a muslim and you don't you easily offended then i ask you maybe to skip a minute or two until the end of this excerpt just let's look at it and then i'm going to discuss it with you okay let me just give you some background first before i show you the excerpt uh, you see there's a verse um in in uh, chapter 16 of the quran where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala god addresses um the community and mentions to them that he is fully aware that um, there's an accusation that the Prophet is not receiving the Wahi or the Quranic revelation from Jibreel or from the Holy Spirit, but is in fact in touch with another man or with somebody else or with some other source of information where he is fed the stuff which he then, he then regurgitates in the form of the Quran. And that uh, the teacher of Muhammad is not really the Holy Spirit, but is in fact a mortal man or mortal people who are feeding him stories which he then sells as the word of God. So that is, that is the background. And this verse comes to make people aware. But now let me first show you how these anti-Muslim uh, uh, guys, how they view this particular verse i have to throw this in here because i find it so so nice so here is a quran verse which says which uh, <laughs> this is funny and we certainly know that they say it is only a human being who teaches him the tongue of the one they refer to is foreign and this recitation is in a clear arabic language yeah uh, <laughs> the, what this grammar is actually uh, saying so it, it is saying that they they say, so the people around Muhammad who doubt Muhammad's message and who doubt these all these recitations and their divine origin, they apparently say it is only a human being who teaches him. So there is somebody there among them who teaches Muhammad these things, which is why he is making up these uh, these revelations, because he gets these from some uh, guy who is among these people. Yeah. And then the Quran later clarifies, but the language of that guy that you are referring to is foreign. And this Quran is in clear Arabic language, so it can't be that he's taking it from that from that guy. But it's it's funny that the Quran is actually it's hilarious. With this. <laughs> uh, uh, one of us should make a video called like Allah's dumbest responses <laughs> to arguments, right? Because he has things like this, right? Like, and they yeah, ask, yeah. "Why is it Muhammad sent with a miracle?" And Allah's response is because other people from other generations had rejected miracles, therefore you don't get any. It's like, wait. Yeah. That, Okay, so let me just quickly uh, explain to you what you are listening to there, and it, it gets progressively worse. I mean, uh, if you if you are easily offended, I will uh, caution you against watching that video because it is insulting to to Allah, it is insulting to the Prophet, and what the the argument that they putting forward is that this verse, Surah uh, sixteen, verse ninety uh, uh, one hundred three, Surah uh, the B Nahl. This verse is stating a, a, a ridiculous counter-argument, you know, against the accusation that the prophet is hearing, is being taught by a mortal man. So this verse, according to them, and according to, I mean, the translation makes that um, inference 
actually very probable, the, the translation of these two translators. The one is uh, Sahih International, which is the Saudi approved one, and the other one is also an Egyptian translation, Mustafa Khattab. So these two translations are in fact arguing that, and follow closely, the, the translation is stating that the Prophet could not have learned these messages or these revelations from a man because this man doesn't speak Arabic. This man speaks a foreign language. And because this man speaks a foreign language, the Prophet could not have learned or being in, being, uh, could not have been instructed by such a person. And they're ridiculing that argument. They're saying that this is such a foolish argument and it actually gets worse. You can or listen to ever uttered. And yet, we go to the Quran, and when Muhammad is accused of plagiarizing stories from this dude that he keeps getting stories from, Allah's response is, no, that's impossible. This is in Arabic, whereas that guy, that guy's not a native Arabic speaker. It's I, I think you have to, you have to visualize how these, how these revelations, how these Quran verses come into existence. These revelations come into existence. So in other words, what they're saying is they, in fact, ridiculing the verse because they say the verse is a very poor uh, refutation of that accusation. And we know that accusation, the accusation that the Prophet stole or plagiarized the Quran or the messages or the ideas in the Quran from other people. Now, if you look at the translation here, which um, according to Yusuf Ali also, let me show you the translation quickly, and then you can, you can decide what you think of this translation. Okay, this is Yusuf Ali's translation of chapter 16, verse 103. We know indeed that they say it is a man that teaches him. The tongue of him they wickedly point to is notably foreign, while this is Arabic, pure and clear. Again, you see, the, the translation here does allow for a, a, an, an accusation that this is a weak argument. I mean, you, you, you cannot really say, think about it, that the prophet could not have plagiarized it because the, the, the source of the information is like foreign, is a foreigner, is a foreign language speaker, and you are an Arabic speaker. I mean, we all know that it is possible to plagiarize material from a foreign language. And so this, 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 this defense of this verse doesn't really hold. You know, it's, it's not a strong defense and it, it's subject to ridicule. And maybe fair enough, you know, people that like David Wood and these, they are there to test our defenses. And we, we need to look at our defenses and to make sure that we are not translating or mistranslating the Arabic. The Arabic is perfect. It's our interpretation of the Arabic that is a problem. But now let me let me quickly come back to the accusation. The accusation is that the Prophet Muhammad salam, plagiarized, stole ideas from other religions, from other uh, schools or other uh, scholars. And we know that because that's even an accusation at this level today. So the first part of the verse is not really, we don't have a, we don't have a, I, nobody will, will, will disagree that the per, first part of the verse is spot on. We know indeed that they say it is a man that teaches him. It's a mortal. The word Bashar means a mortal man. Right. So, so that part we're all in agreement with, that they all say that. It's really the second part that we need to understand because it doesn't make sense to say that the source of the plagiarism is Greek or is Hebrew or is Syriac and the prophet is Arabic. So how can he plagiarize Syriac or Greek or um, Aramaic? Uh, and, and, and so the, the obvious translation that Lisan, A'ajami, and, and, and the word is A'ajamiyun. A'ajamiyun means foreign. Right, Arjamiyun. So, but it 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 it's not foreign in the sense you see. Arjam means outlandish because Arjamiyun, Arjam is Arabic. When you say Arjam, 
then it, it, is, it, is, it is slightly different from Rajam. Rajam is foreign. Rajam is outlandish. And so we need to just make sure that our wording that we translate is correct. So, and then also there's another word that comes in here, which is Lisan. Now, Lisan, you know, we can, there's many words. Lisan is, in a very literal sense, it means tongue. Right? It means tongue. But it, it also means language in a more non-literal sense. But it also means parlance. It could also mean dialogue or the or the, 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 the discourse. Right? So the tongue, the discourse, the dialogue. And of course, I think for me, the most appropriate word for the word lisan is parlance. The parlance. So in other words, the type of talk, the, the talk, the tone. Right? The, 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 the tone and the, um, the, 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 the theme is what is referred to here as Lisan. Right, so let's look at the accusation that they level against the Prophet. And that is that he stole it from other people. That accusation is still alive and well. And we know it because it's very commonly leveled, that accusation. Let me, let me show you an example of where that accusation Okay, so here we have the same David Wood making the, the accusation that the Quran is here, plagiarized. In Surah 18, we read about the companions of the cave, a group of people who supposedly uh, went to sleep and then woke up 300 years later. This myth goes back to Bishop uh, Stephen of Ephesus, and it's around the middle of the 5th century. According to Surah 19, Jesus began preaching as soon as he came out of Mary's womb. The story comes from the 6th century Arabic infancy gospel. The story of a bird teaching Cain how to bury his brother in Surah 5 comes from Mishnah Sanhedrin. The legend of Mary giving birth under a palm tree in Surah 19 comes from an apocryphal work called The History of the Nativity of Mary and the Savior's Infancy, uh, written in the early 600s. So this is Muhammad's lifetime. The account of Jesus giving life to clay birds in Surah... Okay, so you get the point. The point that I'm trying to make here is that the same David Wood... He echoes the belief of many Christians that the Prophet Muhammad stole the message or the ideas in his Quran, the stories in the Quran, from traditional Christian uh, preachers and scholars and from apocryphal gospels. Um, and he stole it from Mishnah, we heard there, from, from, from the Talmudic uh, texts also. And so. The, the, the accusation is there, and David Wood joins Christians in leveling that ac accusation against the Prophet. So that stands, we know that. The Quran is true in stating that they accuse you of being taught or stealing the ideas from Christian texts and from Talmudic texts. Right. Now, we're looking at the response of this verse, and that is really the essence of this video. I'm trying to look at the meaning of that Quranic verse because we are here as students of the Quran. We're trying to make sense of the Quran. Does the Quran really say that Muhammad could not copy or could not steal ideas because those people spoke in foreign languages and the Prophet is Arabic? Does he really mean that? Does it make any sense? No, it doesn't make sense. So we need to understand the verse truly for what it is. But before I go to the verse and the true meaning of the verse, which is very, very faithful to the Arabic text, in my opinion, that what I want to say first is, let me, let me make this point, the texts that they accuse the prophet from plagiarizing, are very, very, very vulgar texts. Now I'm going to show you an example, or they're very outlandish, let me put it to you like that, outlandish and vulgar. The texts, for example, that one of the things that they accuse the prophet from plagiarizing is the infancy gospel of Thomas. Now I've got the infancy gospel of Thomas here. You know, we're living in the time of the internet. We There's no excuse for not doing the due diligence. Now I'm going to show you passages from the infancy gospel of Thomas and you tell me if you think this doesn't sound outlandish or, or weird. Just look at these. Look at this passage from the infancy gospel of Thomas. I'm just going to read you one and, and, and there's a lot of them. Eh? I'm just taking out one which is particularly offensive and outlandish. It tells the story of Jesus one of as, as a child 
And this is a story of Jesus being a small child playing in the village somewhere. And it's, it says here, after that again, he went through the village and a child ran and dashed against his shoulder. Jesus ran uh, and a, sorry, a child ran and bumped against Jesus. And Jesus was provoked and said unto him, thou shalt not finish thy cause. So literally saying, go all thy way, get away from me, in other words. And immediately he fell down and died. But certain, when they saw what was done, he said, when, sorry, thou shall not finish thy cause, literally means you will not be able to finish this, 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 this run of yours, this cause of you where you are running. And, and as soon as he said that, whence was this young ma child born, for that every, sorry, and immediately the child fell down and died. Right? So what, what, what the story is telling you, a child bumps against Jesus, and Jesus curses this child and tells him, you're going to be dead now, you're going to die. Now, you know, and I'm not, I'm not, this is not the only one. There are several of them here that speaks of a vindictive Jesus, a Jesus that uses superpowers to hurt people, to, to, he laughs like he's a, some kind of psychopathic character. And, and, and so this is the book that the prophet Muhammad plagiarized. A book that is clearly outlandish, that, that doesn't ref, re, reflect and represent the kindness and decency with which the Quran projects Jesus. You know, if you read all the passages in the Quran on Jesus, all you get is a balanced and fair view of the Prophet Jesus. <coughs> okay, let me take something in the Talmud also, because he said there that the Prophet also plagiarized the Talmud. Now the Talmud, the Mishnah, is known to be replete with vulgarity with racism we know i wouldn't say repeat i haven't read the old talmud but it is known to have contained passages that are that are repulsive that are abhorrent that a person wouldn't want to be associated with and we know in the quran there's absolutely no racism unless you want to force racism on a verse or two that is not racist that is speaking about people whose faces will darken because of evil, and that's got nothing to do with racism. But let me show you a, an excerpt from this other book that the Prophet supposedly plagiarized, the Talmud, and you see if that doesn't also sound repulsive and abhorrent. Look at this now again. Now we have the Talmud, and the Talmud spoke, speaks in this way. Although the non-Jew has the same body structure as the Jew, they compare with the Jew as a monkey to a human. The souls of non-Jews come from impure spirits and are, are called pigs. Now, I hope I've got the right translation here, but um, if you're Jewish and you are feeling offended, please correct me, send me a message in the comments. I wouldn't want to misrepresent your, your books, but I do, I have read, passages from the Talmud and the Talmud does contain certain things that reflect the Jews as some sort of special species or special breed that is really above and beyond ordinary people. Some of it, it is permitted to take the body and life of a Gentile. It is the law to kill anyone who denies the Torah, the Christians. The Jews are called human beings, but the non-Jews are not humans, they are beasts. You know, I'm not saying this to hurt the Jewish people or to insult the Talmud. I'm, you know, I, I, I'm not here. Yeah, that's not my objective here. Although I've got criticism against the Talmud, that's not the objective of this session. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show that the books that Muhammad plagiarized are books that are outlandish, that are racist, that have got racist passages, that ascribe to Jesus weird behavior, cynical behavior. Uh, psychopathic behavior and you cannot find in the Quran psychopathic uh, behavior ascribed to Jesus or any form of uh, 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 you know rank racism being ascribed to God or to his will so let's look at that verse now again right you've got the full picture I'm going to go back to the verse 
and a real translation of that. Okay, go with me through this verse now and see whether this doesn't make profound sense in light of what I've just given you. وَلَقَدَ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّهُمْ يَقُولُونَ إِنَّمَا يُعَلِّمُهُ بَشَرٌ لِسَانُ الَّذِي يُلْحِدُونَ إِلَيْ أَعْجَمِيٌ وَهَذَا لِسَانٌ عَرَبِيٌ مُبِينٌ We are fully aware of the claim that a mortal is instructing him with the Quran. Right? On that passage we've got common cause. But the parlance of he who supposedly does the instruction is outlandish while this Arabic parlance is compelling. Doesn't that make a lot more sense? Doesn't that make a lot more sense? The, the, the refutation now of Allah Almighty in chapter 16 verse 103 to David Wood and to all these people who accuse the Prophet of being a plagiarist is that the the sources that you claim he plagiarized, those sources, the Infancy Gospel of Thomas, the Mishnah Talmud, these sources are vulgar, they are outlandish. And the message of the Quran is a balanced, it is a compelling message. And I challenge them to show me any of the racism that you can find in the Talmud, in the Quran. I challenge them to find any of the ridiculous psychopathic stories about Isa in the Quran. So how can we accuse the Prophet of plagiarizing the Talmud, plagiarizing the apocryphal Gospels, when those Gospels and the, when the Talmud contain so many outlandish stories? And here we then settle on a proper and true translation. Why yulhiduna, yulhiduna ilay a'jamiyun wahada. They impugn or the the man they accuse him of speaking is vulgar and outlandish in his parlance. Right? The parlance of the Talmud, the parlance of the apocryphal Gospels, uh, Gospels are ajamiyun. They are outlandish. They are weird. They don't make sense. They don't tell you with what makes sense and what is, com what is uh, um, fathomable. But this book, Hadha, this book in Arabic, and emphasis is not on the Arabic, you see. That is what they're doing. They're putting the emphasis on the Arabic. The emphasis must be on the Mubinun. This Arabic parlance is compelling. I hope you see how important it is for us to translate the Quran, not just simplistically, but to get to, real, to, real, to the real meaning of how the Quran dispels and repudiates the false accusations that were made against the Prophet.